Okay, so what we'll talk about this morning is uh, some patterns and anti-patterns and some best practices thrown in along the way. Basic focus for OIC was we built it to be in the sweet spot for cloud to cloud integration. And so typically SaaS to SaaS applications, perhaps Salesforce to ServiceNow, for example. So for this, there is no additional infrastructure required beyond what OIC provides. So OIC is always made available on a public IP address and it always talks to public IP addresses on the, on the target side. So with that in mind, let's go and look at uh, some patterns that extend this. So the first one is on-prem integration. In order to access on-prem systems, or those could be systems in another cloud, such as AWS, or they could be virtual compute networks in OCI, they could be in Azure, they could be in Google Cloud or Ali Cloud. In whatever the case, if they're on a private network, they will have private non-routable IP addresses. In order to access those systems, we use the connectivity agent, and we'll talk more about the connectivity agent later. But the connectivity agent allows us to install a small 140 meg download piece of software. It connects back to Oracle Integration Cloud using HTTPS, so standard punch through a, a corporate firewall. If you can browse the internet from your corporate network, then the connectivity agent will work. Connectivity agent asks Integration Cloud, have you got work for me? If it does, then it will pick up the request and then send it either directly to the target application or you might want to take advantage of existing on-premise integrations either in SOA Suite or in another tool such as MuleSoft and call those directly instead. Now, if you're using SOA Suite, we have some optimizations that enable you to browse all the available SOA Suite integrations from the cloud. And similarly, from within JDeveloper, we can browse all the OIC integrations. So the key thing about this is that we can access private network endpoints, but we have to do it through the connectivity agent. Now, if the application on the private network needs to call back into Oracle integration. There are two different possible routes that it can go. If the application is making REST or SOAP calls, or it's eBusiness Suite or Siebel, then in that case, the, the calls will go directly from the application through the firewall into OIC, and the agent is only involved for EBS and Siebel in actually setting up the callbacks. So when you activate an integration that uses an EBS trigger, then at activation time, the connectivity agent says, oh, I see that uh, an EBS trigger is being activated. It connects to EBS and then it configures EBS to have a trigger that will fire and it sets the target for that trigger to be OIC directly. So once that is done, uh, during operation, the calls go directly from app to OIC. So if you have a network where you allow list applications to access the internet, then in that case, your EBS instance or Siebel instance or other applications that are using REST and SOAP would need to be allow listed. Usually that's not the case. Usually as long as they use the right proxy, they can go through the firewall. But that's, some, some companies have an additional allow listing. However, if you're trying to have a trigger based on Oracle AQ, or reading a file, or querying a database, and when records appear in the database, or messages on a queue, or SAP, those callbacks, those triggers, all go through the connectivity agent because all of those paths are not using standard HTTPS protocols. 
So they're, they're using SQL net or they're using something else. So just to be aware, bottom line, applications using HTTPS go straight to OIC, even if they're in a private network. Other protocols have to go through connectivity agent. Now, in this brave new cloud world, we all thought that files were such an old technology, nobody would want them. But the reality is, of course, that files are still a huge part of integration. And so here we show a couple of different file patterns. One pattern is that we can use MFT within uh, SOA cloud service, either provisioned as SOA CS or provisioned using Marketplace, we can use that MFT server so that a source app can push a file into the MFT server and then we can pick it up, it can push it into Oracle Integration Cloud using MFT. A new capability that we released about six, eight weeks ago is an embedded file server in OIC. So this is part of OIC, it's an option for those of you that have Gen 2 instances, you can check to enable it. This enables you to set up an SFTP server very quickly, very easily, and gives you folder level access control so that multiple customers can be pushing data into the same file server, but they would each have their own unique credentials, their own unique certificates, and they would not be able to see uh, other clients' files and addresses. Then from within Oracle integration, we would use the SFTP adapter running on a schedule, that's what the little clock in the corner is, running on a schedule to pick up those files and process them. Okay, another common pattern we see is that often applications are lifted and shifted from on-prem into a cloud infrastructure. So this is basically replatforming the application. If that's the case, and if the, you already have SOA suite being used on-premise, it might make sense for your customers to take advantage of SOA suite in the cloud, provisioned via marketplace, uh, they can continue to run their existing integrations and still talk to their applications that have been replatformed. If these are newer type integrations, then we can connect directly or more likely through the agent, uh, connectivity agent. One of the, the key features is we have the process capabilities in Oracle Integration Cloud. One of the key um, extension capabilities we take advantage of is to embed the process forms from Oracle Integration Process into SaaS applications. This is an important pattern because it means that, for example, a salesman can access extensions to his Salesforce or Engagement Cloud application without ever leaving the screens he's familiar with. He just sees some new screens which are actually embedded process forms. These process forms will kick off processes in Oracle integration. The forms themselves can be using Oracle integration to retrieve data from the application they're embedded in so that you really get a very seamless experience. Then if you have a user using a different application but part of the same process, Again, those same forms could be embedded, for example, in a financials application like Fusion ERP. So that again, the accounting person doesn't have to go into another tool. So very powerful, we can then, if necessary, access on-premise systems as well, and we can even embed the forms in on-premise systems if we need to. One, one key point, sorry, that I, I should have made about this, is that when we're extending our applications, we generally do not want to create a separate database with application data in it. We generally want to use integration to pull and push data into our existing systems of record. We don't want to create new systems of record. It's a very important point on an architectural perspective. Keep the data with who owns it don't create new databases.
It's also possible for us to kick off whole business processes from within Oracle integration. We can use the process capability to create a much longer running integration that perhaps involves human approvals. And so the ability to kick that off from Oracle integration makes it very simple to access from SaaS applications. Similarly to the way that we talked about extending process forms, we can do the same with Visual Builder as well. And we can embed Visual Builder uh, forms and screens into existing applications. So this gives us the option to either extend the SaaS user experience or to create our own custom apps. A common use case we often see is to use Visual Builder to create a mobile application for particular functions that aren't mobile enabled in an application. Visual Builder can then take advantage of adapters in Oracle integration to, to update or retrieve data from the SaaS applications. And of course, within the Oracle e ecosystem, we have a large number of other services running in OCI that we can take advantage of from within Oracle Integration Cloud. We particularly will notice in the REST adapter, we support uh, the standard OCI signatures alongside with AWS signatures. So we can take advantage of all the OCI native applications, including blockchain, Oracle Digital Assistants, as well as uh, calling out into container native applications.